Hi, and welcome back to Break 100 Golf. I'm John. If you're looking for information about what's on my golf simulator shopping list, then you've come to the right place. Now, before I get started, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel right now. It'll really help the channel to grow and allow me to continue to bring videos just like this to YouTube. So there's a bunch of things on the shopping list that I wanted to go over and really kind of give you some advice based on my successes and failures with each one of those items. I'm gonna let you know what I purchased in order to improve my golf simulator uh, that I have built here in my garage. And that is going to also relate to anywhere that you have your simulation uh, system or plan on building your golf simulator. So here are the golf sim shopping list items that I'm gonna cover. The enclosure, the mat, the launch monitor, the control box, the speaker, the landing material, the projector and possibly a mount, the audio cable, the HDMI cable, tees, the ball tray, golf sim software, and a gaming PC. So let's start with the enclosure. This particular enclosure is eight foot four inches by eight foot four inches. And I don't recommend if you have the room that you buy this. So I built this because I wanted to only take up one bay of my three car garage. And the reason why I don't recommend this is because it is much more difficult to project a one by one ratio on the screen. You have to kind of pick and choose and maybe pay more for your projector in order to do that. Now I'm very happy with that projector. However, I would say that a 10 by eight or a 12 by nine that has a four by three or a four by three ratio would be better for you because the projector is gonna be easier to work with. So my particular um, enclosure, I bought this at the indoor golf shop through their Amazon store. It's five feet deep, eight foot four by eight foot four. And it comes with a premium screen. I absolutely love this thing. I've hit tens of thousands of balls into that screen at 140 miles an hour plus a lot of them. So it has really held up. And you know, this one was about $1,399. They have a, you know, a 10 by eight, they have a 12 by nine, they have like at least 10 different sizes, but that doesn't mean you have to purchase yours there. I'm just giving you a recommendation that they make a great product. So this is more of a DIY setup. They send you, you know, the, the outside, uh, the screen, some bungees, the padding, stuff like that. In every place, no matter where you buy, it's gonna be different, what they send you. You have to do research what's best for you. And then like with this one, you had to buy the one inch conduit uh, for it to build the structure, which is on the outside and the top, and then the structure here. Uh, and then there's padding to protect that and stop the ball from coming back at you, which I do recommend. So let's move on to the mat. So initially I used the mat that's sitting right here, which is to your right. And it's a little bit thinner uh, and it's just too forgiving, quite frankly. Um, it'll allow you to bounce your club and still hit the ball. And it makes you believe that you may be having a good shot when you're really not. So the one on your left is the mat that I upgraded to. And this is the Real Field Country Club Elite. It's a five by five mat. So. If you do buy a mat, I recommend you buy something like that, like a five by five, because essentially you have four mats in one. You can keep rotating it. And I also, along with that mat or any mat that you buy, I'm not in love with these. So these are the rubber tees that you see like on the driving ranges and they go up through the mat. And what has happened with me in the past is these tees tend to tear up through the bottom rubber of the mat and then it leaves a gaping hole that has to be repaired. So what I did was I purchased these and these are able to be custom cut uh, and these tees are just indestructible and I have them cut the way I want them for my driver. And then they have a smaller tee that you can use like if you're teeing off with an iron on a par three. And these things are like, you know, 20 of them, 10 of each, 
for $10 on Amazon. And they also have another brand that I saw that a lot of people use called Bertie, and those look like they're really good quality as well. So that's a little bit of my advice with the mat is just make sure you get a good mat um, that's on your golf sim shopping list because if you don't, you'll be sorry. Moving on to the launch monitor. I currently use the Garmin R10. Uh, I'm able to use it with the golf simulator software, which right now, so if you look in the background right there, that's the driving range for GS Pro. And I use GS Pro primarily for my golf simulation software. I do use uh, Awesome Golf, some for practice as well. And it fills up the screen uh, nicely like this as well. But the launch monitor is something that you have to make the determination for by researching. And what I mean by that is, let's say that you've got righties and lefties that are your friends or your family. And you know, having a launch monitor that's gonna, if you're a righty and that launch monitor is gonna sit like right here, uh, that launch monitor is very difficult to switch over to a lefty. That's why something like a Garmin or a Mevo Plus or a Rapsodo or one of those type of launch monitors are going to maybe be better for you because if it sits directly behind the center where you strike your ball right here, you can go back and forth with lefties and righties without an issue. Where if you're using some of the higher end launch monitors that sit like right here, you're gonna have a problem with that. So think about that on your shopping list for a launch monitor because that really is super important. I would like to upgrade my launch monitor to like the Mevo Plus uh, with the Pro package eventually. However, I'm not willing to dole out $3,000 right now and the Garmin is still working just fine with the open API interface with GS Pro, which is the software that I use. So when you're looking for a launch monitor, it's really important to realize what software it's compatible with and if you can upgrade that or use different types of software if you don't like it, uh, because once you buy it, you may not be stuck with it, but the resale value is not gonna be anywhere near what it is brand new. So definitely, definitely, definitely do your research on that. There's so many different options out there, so many high-end options, and depending upon how much you wanna spend, most launch monitors are going to be basically $600 to about $15,000 for the home use launch monitors. Anywhere from the launch monitors that sit behind the ball to on the side to the above mount or ceiling mount type launch monitors, which are usually typically the higher end. Let's move on. So a control box is something to think about on your shopping list for a golf sim because in the beginning I didn't use that and I ended up walking back and forth and back and forth to my keyboard, which is over here up against the wall. So this control box right here, I mounted it on a stand because I found that I enjoyed that better than taking my golf club and popping the buttons on the ground. And uh, this one is a Rockshore Golf Golf Simulator control box. It's the GS Pro Edition or the GSP Edition. And I really like the box. It's super dependable. Uh, they make excellent products there. So think about that. So you can use that control box to, you know, move your, your aim point left or right or back or forward. You can, you know, scout your location. You can take a mulligan you can do a flyover. You know, there's a lot of different things that you can do without going back over to your keyboard. Some people have asked me, okay, so why don't you just take a wireless keyboard and put it over on the stand? Well, the problem is then I got to put my club down. Then I got to do two fingers right here. And once I turn these lights out, which I do so that the image is nice and bright and close my blinds because it's in the middle of the afternoon, it's hard to see it, you know, unless you have a lit keyboard. And are you going to have a lit keyboard if it's wireless? Probably not. So I really like that. And that's something to think about on your golf sim shopping list, which is the control box. And then next, I don't know if you can see it, but over here is my speaker. It was like 150 bucks. You might ask, okay, so what do you need a speaker for? Won't, won't you just use your projector for the speaker? Well, in this environment, in a three car garage, um, it's, you can't hear it, you know, and, and at least with this projector, and this projector was almost $2,000. Now you might be able to hear it better or you might not care if it's in like a basement or something like that. But uh, I think you really need a speaker because there's ambient sound. So like if the ball lands in 
a stream or a pond, uh, you're gonna get that splash. If you hit the pin, it's gonna sound like you hit the pin. If you drop it in the hole, um, land on the green, land on the fairway, land in a bunker. You get all these ambient sounds as well as like birds or wildlife or whatnot. And sometimes it, there's even commentary on some of the courses depending upon who designed it. So a speaker I think adds to the effect and the ambiance uh, and the immersiveness of your golf simulator. And it's a good thing to put on your golf sim shopping list. So moving on, uh, we have the landing material. And what I mean by that is, when I strike a ball, I am going to hit that screen with this driver anywhere from, you know, 135 to 155 miles an hour, usually when I swing. So what happens is, that thing hits hard. And sometimes, it may not come back the way you want it to. However, if you have good landing material, that will slow that ball down from bouncing all over the place around your barn, your shed, your basement, your garage, whatever that may be, because 90% of the time, that ball hits that screen and bounces on these mats. So I bought four mats. I bought two um, five by four mats and two five by three mats. And that allows that ball to hit and bounce. And usually it just stops like right here on the edge of my mat uh, or stops just, just in, in front of it. Or if it is still coming, I can put my club down and stop that ball from rolling to the back of my garage very easily because it's not hardly moving. If you don't use proper landing material, that ball is going to be bouncing all over the place. It is going to be very annoying and probably quite frankly unsafe. So it's something to think about. And I'm gonna put links to all these items that I have, but I mean, you can use whatever you want. I've seen guys that have DIY'd their own golf simulator, their own enclosure and stuff like that, and they've experimented with different things. And then the first time it doesn't work, and then the second time it doesn't work, and the third, and then they finally have something that kind of works. Well, I can guarantee you, if you watch any of my videos where I've hit balls, this thing works really well, the way I have it set up. Next is the projector. So I have my projector mounted above and offset. It's about right here. And I'm lucky enough that I have 11 foot ceilings in my garage. So no matter, I'm six foot three, so no matter how tall most people are, they're never going to be able to hit the ceiling in this garage. And most of the people that play here in fact, all the people that I know are right-handed, as most people are. So they're never going to hit that projector, which is way over here on that swing, okay? And my mount is very safely mounted in a stud on the top, so you have to think about that. When you buy your projector, and we're talking about more of a full golf simulator, we're not talking about hitting into a net, things like that. We're talking about a full golf simulator, like what's here. So that mast is mounted right into the stud in my ceiling. And then I also have a security cable that goes into the back of the projector. So that if that were to ever break off, it would never come down and injure somebody. And I also don't want to damage my projector, which is the BenQ LHA 20 ST, specifically made for golf simulators, the colors, it has a one-to-one -one ratio, which I said in the beginning is really, really hard to get. Um, it has a setting. So it made it very easy and I was able to set it up within 10 minutes. But that projector has never been hit by a golf ball, thousands and thousands and thousands of swings, not even close. So think about where you're gonna mount it with your projector, or maybe you're not gonna mount it on it. Maybe you're gonna put it on a shelf over on, you know, the wall of your garage or Maybe you're gonna put it on the floor and put it in a case. That's always an option too. I park a car in here and I take all these mats out and they all come inside. So with me, that wasn't really an option. However, I probably would have done that had I not needed this bay for a vehicle, which I, I park a classic vehicle in here uh, that I don't wanna park outside. Before I move on, there's a lot of projectors out there. Just because I bought a BenQ doesn't mean you should go towards that, but I do believe that they make some of the best projectors for golf simulation that are out there. 
Um, I'm a big fan of those projectors. So the next would be the audio cable. So I bought a 50 foot audio cable, you know, a 3.5 millimeter. And you have to think about that. What's your output on your projector gonna be for your audio? So my audio cable runs up the back wall over my enclosure and to the projector. And it's 50 feet long, so there's plenty of length. And I love having the projector hooked up to that speaker for many reasons. One, for my ambiance, for the immersiveness of the golf simulation, and two, if I wanna watch you know, a golf tournament in my garage while I'm cleaning, I can watch YouTube TV and project the image on that screen with my projector, and then I got the sound right there. And we've had movie night in here. It's really kinda of cool to have that multi-use setup. Next would be the HDMI cable. Make sure you have a good HDMI cable for your enclosure. Uh, for your screen, for the quality of the video and possibly audio as well. I have a good quality uh, 50 foot HDMI cable that I bought for a very good price on Amazon. And again, I'm gonna put all the links in there uh, for the golf sim uh, shopping list. Doesn't mean you have to use what I did, but it's just a guide. Next would be the tees. I kind of talked about those earlier. I talked about these. I'll put the link for these tees. And like I said, these things, you can custom cut them to whatever length you want. And they are indestructible. You can hit them thousands of times. They will not break. And they are not tracked by the radar from your launch monitor, at least not from my garment. And I don't think it, any would. I would not use like, even though this mat can take a T, if I put that T back in the same spot, eventually it's gonna wear that spot out. And two, I don't want shards of wood or plastic going everywhere. Uh, that can be stepped on, things like that. Uh, I just don't think that's a good idea. So using those type of tees are really good. I think these are fine in the beginning, but my experience has been that they pull through the mat eventually and create a gaping hole. All right, next would be the ball tray. So I bought this ball tray because initially I would just like grab 50 balls and put them in the tray and just start smashing them. And, you know, I would worry about it later when I was done practicing. Well, now I just use one or two or three different balls, depending upon, you know, if I'm driving or if I'm hitting an iron shot, if I want a softer ball or a ball that just has um, a, a better or lower spin or maybe has more spin. So depending upon what shot I'm hitting, I may choose that ball, but typically, I use one ball now. Uh, next would be the golf sim software. And I kind of touched on this a little bit. Uh, it's super important that when you make your decision for your launch monitor, that you're gonna be able to expand maybe to different software down the road because, you know, I believe that GS Pro is the best golf sim software out there, but that's just my opinion. You know, maybe something's better for you. All right, next would be a gaming PC. Now, when we talk about a gaming PC on your golf simulator shopping list, I don't think a laptop is always the best choice. I don't think that they're ideal. They're usually not expandable as far as anything other than memory. Like you can't change out the GPU, things like that. Most of the time they're soldered right on there. So initially what I did is I bought a laptop and the GPU is the true power of that gaming PC. And, you know, most of these golf simulator software engines require you to have about 16 gig of memory and like a 3060 NVIDIA or higher. And if you're using 4K, you're gonna want something even more than that. Always look at the manufacturer, what they recommend for you to have a great experience, not just a marginal experience with that software, but a great experience with a specific PC. Usually Apple is out. It's typically PC only, Windows only. Windows 10 or 11, I find that most of the software uh, is going to require Windows 10 or 11, and it's gonna require you to have a good amount of memory and a good amount of video memory or speed on your GPU. Uh, my laptop was only four gig of GDDR6 
Once I scrapped the laptop and upgraded to a PC with 32 gig of RAM and a 3060 NVIDIA GPU, uh, usually they require you to have like an i7 or Ryzen 7 CPU. Realistic golf simulator software is going to tax an old computer and it's just probably not gonna work. Moving on, so this isn't really a shopping list item. However, this really helps me. So I have a channel based around golf simulation. So I don't want people to see the rest of my garage. I want this whole space to kind of look like it's it's built for it. So I put tracks on my ceiling and I took these backdrops and used a, a grommet tool and put grommets on the top and they're like 12 feet long. So I have 11 foot ceilings. So it really worked out really nicely. It only cost me a hundred, couple hundred dollars, but it also what it does is it makes me feel more immersed in my space, you know, and it also may help you if you don't use the side nets, which I, I can't set up side nets every single time, you know, in this garage. I, I don't have time to do that. It came with them, but I'm not going to set them up. I just take the curtain, swing it closed or swing it open when I'm done. It takes seconds and it helps to prevent, you know, if my wife walks out into the garage and goes to the refrigerator and I have an errant shot, you know, testing out a new club or whatever, or a new swing or whatever, you know, that's gonna stop the ball from going anywhere else in the garage. And it's also gonna stop balls, again, if I shank one, from going back into the stuff that's in the back of the garage and I can't get to the golf ball, whatever. So that's about it, but I wanna talk about a few key points that I may not have touched on talking about each one of these shopping list items. One would be on the enclosure, make sure you get a premium screen because it will last, I've hit probably 30,000 balls into that screen and there is no visible wear on that screen, which is amazing. Get a premium screen. On the mat, get yourself a good mat when you buy one, the best you can afford. Do your research. Look what other golfers and golf sim experts have said about the mats because it really is important, one, to avoid injury, two, to make sure that you're getting a realistic shot. And you can use your data metrics to, you know, to make sure that you're hitting the ball properly, but the mat is very, very helpful. Uh, as far as the launch monitor, do your research uh, because you don't want to get stuck with it and go from launch monitor to launch monitor to launch monitor. I've used my Garmin with three different softwares right now and I've been very happy with it. I've had it for a year. Uh, the control box, that's an item that is not 100% necessary, but it really helps you to save time, to play faster, and it just works really, really well. Uh, as far as the laning material, again, make sure you get something good for your golf simulator because if you don't, that ball is going to be bouncing all over the place. As far as the projector goes, get one that has a higher amount of lumens. I didn't really talk about that. I was initially gonna buy one that had 2,000 lumens in this one because of the amount of light that I sometimes get through the windows and all that, it may be an issue. So this one is over 3,500 lumens and it does a great job. Let me go ahead and shut these blinds and I'll turn off some of the lights and you'll see what the image usually looks like when I'm using my golf simulator. So this is what the image is going to typically look like when I'm using my golf simulator. Um, hopefully that's in good focus for you. Really what I do is, it's nice to have lights that are behind the enclosure and above it because then it's going to give you enough of light to strike the ball but still allow your image to retain the brightness uh, and vivid color as well. The audio cable and the HDMI cable is obvious. Uh, ball tray and the tees, uh, I think we went over enough of that. The ball tray is uh, an optional item, but it helps me to clean everything up and, and keep things organized. As far as the golf simulation software, I use GS Pro. I find it to be absolutely excellent. It's very realistic and very dependable. There's over 500 courses, it's just terrific. Um, gaming PC, don't cheap out on the PC. Get something that has the correct specs based on what your software company uh, recommends. As far as the curtains or the backdrop, that's, that's really just an optional thing. So that's gonna about do it. I certainly do appreciate you watching today. 
Please hit that like button and share with any of your friends that may be interested in what is on a golf simulator shopping list. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe right now and turn on notifications so that you're notified when I release new content just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.